Summary of Develop Your Assertiveness by Sue Bishop Make your point. Becoming more assertive and, thus, more able to speak up for yourself confidently, brings many benefits. Assertive people have a greater sense of their own worth. They have better communication skills, so they express themselves well. They represent themselves and others with authenticity. To become more assertive, cultivate the right self-image, attitude, body language, voice and facial expressions. All these are part of the equation if you want to get your point across consistently and be your own best advocate. Infants are born with two types of behavior, assertive and passive. Passivity is a more natural human response, becoming aggressive tends to be a learned behavior. Toddlers learn to express their likes and dislikes as part of their behavioral maturation. This involves learning to say, no, small children often become emotional or have tantrums if they do not get what they want. They learn how to act, either passively or assertively, by receiving praise and rewards for the right behavior. How people are socialized and how other people condition them shapes the way they conduct themselves. For instance, it's not considered ladylike for a woman to be aggressive or to cry in public. But people change their behavior continuously as they learn new ways to behave and react. Most behavior that falls along the passive to aggressive spectrum is not a problem, as long as people comport themselves in an appropriate way in any given situation. Being assertive is about more than words. Conveying assertiveness means communicating with your whole body, including your facial expressions, posture, and vocal tone and volume. That's why it pays to practice how you want to act, because the need to be assertive invariably gets called into play in the midst of a tense situation. When people encounter anxiety or danger, their natural tendency is to react physically, their muscles tense, their stomachs ache and fear wells up, that's normal. Becoming tense is natural, so learning to manage tension is a key life skill. Assertiveness training prepares you to handle stress. To take control of a tense situation, you need to be able to remain relaxed enough to think clearly. If you are in a confrontation and the other person detects, e consciously or subconsciously, that you are getting increasingly tense, he or she may react by becoming more aggressive. Exercises that release tension. Several exercises can help you release tension. The first is to tighten every muscle in your body, including your facial muscles, and hold everything tensed for a few seconds. Then release all at once. Repeat this exercise and finish with a few deep breaths. Another tense and release technique focuses on the muscles of your diaphragm. Point your fingers skyward and compress your palms together with your forearms parallel to the floor. Push hard until you feel the tension in your palms and triceps. Breathe slowly and then exhale. While exhaling, tense your diaphragm. Then breathe in. While you can use these quick techniques to face specific stressful situations, try to practice regular stress relief by listening to music, soaking in the bathtub or meditating. If you meditate, imagine yourself in a peaceful setting or at a concert or ballet, surrounded by your favorite colors, sounds and aromas. Be positive. Self-esteem governs many elements of behavior, so it is productive to work on developing a positive self-image. People who feel confident and in control display assertiveness in their body language. They are relaxed, their arms hang loosely by their sides or rest in their laps. Their faces do not show obvious tension. Assertive people speak positively and avoid conditional phrases, such as, I should have spoken sooner, or, I can't find the time to exercise today. Such statements have negative connotations tied to self-doubt and low self-esteem. People who say such things to themselves or others only make themselves unhappy. When you repeat negative talk in your mind, it undermines your confidence, brings down your mood and saps your energy. To be assertive, try to break the cycle of negative self-talk. Inject positive thoughts into your routine by repeating upbeat sayings, such as, I am getting stronger each day, or, I can handle this situation. Repeat these slogans silently to yourself. Record them and replay the tape, so you hear strong, positive ideas in your own voice. The goal is to listen until these ideas become part of your thought pattern, allowing you to shape a new, inner voice. Assertiveness training teaches that you are responsible for your actions and for seeking what you want. 
the flip side of that responsibility is that other people have the right to deny your requests. This unchangeable fact of life affects business, social and personal relationships. Every adult has basic rights, including having individual feelings and setting personal priorities, deciding how to spend time and with whom, choosing personal political beliefs, making mistakes and admitting when they do not understand what is happening. To be assertive and fair, you must recognize other people's rights. First, acknowledge that they have the right to act as they want. Then affirm that you have rights as well. Being assertive means recognizing the boundary between these two sets of rights. Listen up, stand up. Becoming a better listener can help you get your ideas across to people who don't usually heed your suggestions. Many people endure being interrupted and ignored. To counter these problems, improve your listening skills. Consciously engage in active listening. Pay attention to other people's facial expressions, what they are saying, what they mean, their tone and their body language. Like many people, you may be comfortable in business exchanges that focus on work, but you may find social situations difficult. As you develop good listening skills, chatting casually will become easier. When you talk to new people, ask about their interests, beliefs and attitudes. That creates the foundation for discussing something other than business. If you're in a social setting that calls for small talk, be strategic. If you don't have something interesting or germane to say, be a good listener. You can still participate by being attentive and posing good questions. If you are dealing with a room full of strangers, start a conversation by asking general icebreaking questions, such as, there are a lot of people here, aren't there? Are they from your office, or, I work with Frank. Is he a friend of yours? Avoid asking conversation-killing questions requiring only a yes or no answer. The loud message of body language. Body language conveys feelings and behavior. When your language, gestures and delivery are synchronized and match your overall attitude, you are presenting a whole package that reinforces your message and personality. The elements of body language including eye contact, facial expression, movement, stance and posture, it gives signals about your behavior. Studies find that when two people stand next to one another, and one person is erect while the other is slouched, observers assume that the person who is standing straight is the boss. Slumping is a sign of passivity. Other passive signs include a drooped chin, clenched hands and poor eye contact. To exude more authority, speak in the lower register of your vocal range. To practice, try breathing from your abdomen. When you do so, you take in more air, which can help lower the pitch of your voice. An assertive person has steady, fluid movements, open palms, lowered eyebrows, a primordial sign of greeting, and consistent eye contact. When an assertive person meets someone, he or she will mirror the other person's behavior. Mirroring means matching the vocal tone, volume, rhythm and pace of the other person, as well as his or her vocabulary. This reduces tension and increases rapport. Assertive people mirror out of respect for someone else's feelings. Mirroring increases the opportunity to build a personal affinity. Talk the talk. To get your point across easily and quickly, avoid jargon and use direct statements. Say what you think and feel. When you give an order, focus on what should be done, not on the person who may have caused a problem. Say, this work area should be cleaned, instead of saying, Mike, you should keep this area cleaner. Consider the impact of snapping, you're always late, compared to asking, can you tell me why you were late today? Usually, the person is not always late, so being more specific can elicit a better answer and avoid antagonism. Use personal statements to soften a negative message. Instead of rejecting a proposal by saying, wouldn't it be better to conduct more research? A confident person might say, I think more research is needed before we decide. While the first approach could be construed as critical and could spark an argument, the second statement invites substantiating facts. When an assertive person has to deal with a confrontation, he or she maintains a calm demeanor and a sense of control. To handle a confrontation, go back to using mirroring. Match the pace of your speech to the other person's speech pattern. 
once you establish rapport, lower your tone and volume. This should impel the other person to do the same. Then, see if it is time for reasoning. If so, try to find out what has upset the other person. Attempt to negotiate a solution. If you don't make progress, end the exchange and do not take abuse. Tell the other person the conversation is not progressing and you will continue it tomorrow. If you need someone to depart, send nonverbal cues, such as looking at your watch. To end a phone call, wait for an appropriate opening and inject, it was good speaking with you. Criticism, dishing it out and taking it. Criticism can be justified or unjustified, constructive or destructive. Try to offer positive, constructive criticism. For example, instead of saying that an architect's proposed plan would waste resources, you might say, if we adopt that design, environmentalists may object. If you want to rebuff a suggestion, start your response with the phrase, I disagree, to allow the other person to explain. Starting with, you're wrong, is confrontational and provocative. Giving or receiving criticism is stressful. When appropriate, seek ways to praise employees as well as to criticize them. When someone praises you, acknowledge their approval and thank them for the compliment. If your job requires you to criticize someone, make the undertaking more effective by using these tactics. Address a problem as soon as possible, so it is fresh in everyone's memory. Allocate enough time to have a discussion without being rushed. Allow enough space for you to stand or sit together. Decide whether the criticism should be direct or indirect. Sometimes you can make your point more effectively if you soften the blow. Don't be afraid to use the word I. Talk in specifics and provide exact examples of the problem. If something bothers you, say so. Describe how it affects you and how you feel. Explain exactly what you want. Don't be afraid to say that you are requesting a change in someone's behavior. Use silence effectively. Give the other person time to absorb your message. End the discussion in a positive way. The ability to be assertive will help you during interviews, meetings, and presentations. Self-confidence and assertiveness are tremendous assets when you ask for a raise or promotion. Rely on them anytime you must advocate on your own behalf.